Welcome to today's webinar, where we explore a variety of tips and tricks on how to stay productive in times of crisis. Your host today are myself, Matt Cove, and my colleague, Carl Griffiths. We are both account managers at Superoffice UK. It is a well-known phrase that productivity is not just about doing more, it's about creating more impact with less work. I'm sure you know this to be true in other areas of life, so why not CRM? Sometimes companies can experience unexpected challenges. These can range from extreme weather conditions, power outages, or in more extreme cases, a pandemic, as we've experienced recently. Despite these challenges, many of us continue to stay productive by adjusting the way we work. Instead of going to the office, participating in crowded meetings, hanging out with our colleagues, shaking hands, meeting with clients, etc., we need to do it all a little bit differently and from the safe distance of our homes. This is where digital technology becomes our new best friend. In this webinar, we'd like to show you how you can use SuperOffice CRM software to successfully perform your daily tasks and keep your efficiency levels up while working from home. So today we welcome you to our productivity webinar where we'll share with you 13 tips on how you can use SuperOffice CRM in order to stay in touch with your customers, get the information about your business across, collaborate with your colleagues efficiently, fill in for missing colleagues, and focus on what matters most. Our first section is staying in touch with your customers. Here we will share four ways you can keep in touch with your customers using SuperOffice CRM and its related apps. Tip one, make instant phone calls from SuperOffice. You can use one of our phone integration apps, such as CTI for SuperOffice, a Mesto phone integration, CTI Enhancer, or NetSoft Smart Call to call customers straight from the SuperOffice system. Tip two, create a call list. Carl will take you through an easy way to create a call list and utilize it within SuperOffice. Over to you, Carl. Thanks, Matt. Um, as mentioned, I will now be showing you how easy it can be to create a selection targeting a particular audience you wish to contact and creating that all important call list. First of all, uh, we need to create the selection itself. Uh, so I'll be clicking new and selection. This will now open me a new selection. I'll be giving this a title. Let's say our audience here are London customers. I'll now be setting my parameters. So I want the selection data to be of companies and contacts, and I want the selection to be dynamic. So this will be live data and the category being campaign. I will now save this to then be able to add my criteria. First field I want to add is the company category. So I want all my businesses basically that are currently customers. So this would be customer, possibly prospects as well, and uh, possibly as well business partners and suppliers. Obviously this will be your own list so you can add what you wish. Uh, I will also be adding uh, me being the person responsible for that company. So the user or our contact is current user. And finally, as I'm searching for customers in London, I'll also be choosing London. So I need to find the postal address city, starts with, then I'll type the city, London. So as you can see, I've now created this selection. I will now refresh the results for me to give the results of the current companies in London. And now I will go to my company so let's say I am in KG Services and I'm going to change the mini card to view selection members. And as you can see, with the drop down here, I can move it to the relevant selection I want to be visible. And from here, I can very easily now click into and work through this as a list. So now I'm in ABC Limited. I also want to have a look at Fix and Fit. So all of these customers here I know are in London and I want to contact. So as an example, let's say I want to contact ABC Limited now very easily see who the main contact is Sam uh, which is here I'll be able to then contact appropriately and then note down the phone call once I'm done so let's say I add a conversation and I want to note that I spoke to Sam all is good as an example I can now save this as a completed activity in my activities that business and then move on to the next company Tip three, use SuperOffice Chat to help customers to enable ongoing and uninterrupted communication. 
you can make use of SuperOffice Chat by adding a chat widget on any page of your website. Live chat allows you to immediately connect with your customers, especially if they need help. Having all information on the customer on the screen, you can engage in an efficient and solution oriented conversation in SuperOffice Chat. Tip 4. How to quickly organise a webinar. Carl will now show you how to use the standard tools within SuperOffice to help you organise a webinar, including sign-up, attendee management and communication. Back to you, Carl. As Matt has kindly explained, let's now have a look at one of my projects I made for a webinar upcoming in May. In this scenario, we have already created our selection, which was the same selection used earlier for companies in London. From this selection, we have marketed to this target audience, offering them a form to complete, which I have included in the link on the website field here on the main project card. What we now have is all customers who have completed the form, meaning they wish to attend the webinar, have now all been included as project members listed here. Now the great thing about creating a project to manage the webinar and ensure all tasks are being completed is that you can create a project guide. So if you are managing this, you will always know the process. As you can see, we can clearly see what stage we are currently at and what is also expected moving forward, be this direct activities or the prompt of sending documentation. As you can see, you can clearly see the status in progress and the previous status has been ticked off. So as another user checking on the project, you can clearly see all of these current activities have been completed and these are upcoming. And finally, the end of the process in this particular circumstance might be logging leads or follow-ups. Right at the end here as well, you can actually see that you can track any sales made or potential sales. We haven't yet completed the webinar and already two customers on this webinar are interested in a particular products or services. If you want to ensure you are keeping track of your sales made by projects, just ensure if I was to click onto one of these cells, that you are including the project on the cell card on the project. This will then very easily link the cell to that project and is a great way to see the success rate on a particular project. We've seen how we can deal with incoming communications. Now let's see how we can communicate out to your customers. Tip one, send out a personalized mass mailing. Here, Carl will take you through the process of how to use the built-in mailings tool for SuperOffice to communicate with your customers en masse. Back to you, Carl. Yes, uh, thanks, Matt. And uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, actually show you an example of the mailing tool and the five-step wizard uh, that I'm on now. Uh, and I've already utilised and sent a mailing from that selection we made earlier. So this is the selection for uh, all open sales for London customers, uh, where the value is over a thousand pound. And I want to send a mailing out to them, inviting them to a webinar. So this was another one I showed you uh, a moment ago in projects. Uh, so that, that you're kind of seeing this in reverse order shall we say at the moment uh, and we are now on step one which is set up uh, now this is basically asked me first of all what do you want this mailing to be called uh, so I want this to be called webinar so I can see that clearly from a user's perspective then you've got the actual email itself so the email subject would you want the subject to be called what the it will be visible to that customer once the mailing goes out and the subject here is upcoming webinar uh, the from email address so what email address do you want it to come from uh, I have put in brackets here uh, my email address but I've put super office in so you see the email will come from Carl's uh, my email address uh, but it will actually say super office when it goes through uh, and then uh, do you want the response uh, email address to be different to the from an email address so you can actually either use the same or you can update by clicking the drop down here you can change that you can also choose if you want where you want to archive that mailing do you want to uh, create a folder in mailings it might be that I want to put them against promotions as an example uh, you can also archive against selections and projects so as you can see I have included that webinar project we worked on earlier uh, so uh, the results will obviously archive against that 
You've also got type, uh, so this is the subscription type. Uh, so where we cover GDPR, uh, this is a great way for you to ensure that you're um, sending these mailings out to the correct recipients that have consented to that. Uh, there is a way you can check this as well when we get to recipients at the end. Uh, but you choose what type of, uh, of mailing this is or communication. Uh, choose to, if you want to put any attachments there. And finally, uh, the ability to track as well. So you can choose to track all links and also using Google Analytics if you want to. Once you're happy, uh, you click next. And this will take you to uh, basically the content. So we've already chosen template, which is uh, stage two here. Um, I'm not showing this today because this is basically just the online template library. You can completely create one yourself, but I do recommend you have a look at that. Uh, but here it's all about uh, the content within that uh, particular uh, mailing and as you can see here as an example you have the ability to edit each individual section uh, if I was to click the edit pencil here it will open it up on the right hand side uh, so I've got a variable here which pulls down pulls in their first name uh, then I've got the actual body so you know feel free to update this uh, you can also track links here if you wish so you can add a new link uh, and okay that to be able to track that link at that point uh, you can also add images and play around with the layout uh, you know uh, so you know this is all about editing that the, the actual body of the uh, mailing one other thing i like to show at this point is actually to be able to toggle view for mobile a uh, really useful tool on the mailings because it is great to see what it will look like from a mobile phone perspective more and more people are accessing emails on their phone so it's a really good way to ensure that it looks good on a mobile phone as well and as you can see this is fantastic and now the main thing here at the bottom is this link i want to sign up and now we spoke on the projects about the form uh, they fill it in the information goes into super office and sends them that all important link to that webinar time and date confirmation this is where the link lives uh, so we have the form attached to this particular mailing once you're happy with the content you're then going next again and now when you get here this is where we're looking at the recipients list uh, now, as you can see, I have already got the source here, which is the that selection we created earlier, the team open sales. Uh, and basically, if you wanted to, you could add additional selections so you get even more recipients, uh, even from projects and just contacts themselves if you want to. Now, from this point, I did mention about um, GDPR uh, and subscription management. Um, as you can see here, the majority of these are ready to send. So it means these people have all consented uh, to that particular subscription. However, we have one here for Julie where there is no consent. We do have some options here where you can either override, uh, which is completely up to you. Um, uh, and you can also do things like only one message per email address, update, updating that recipient list and sending, and also including the company. So any other additional emails within companies, you can add to this. So for now, I want to follow GDPR, and I, I you know, this one here is not ready to send because it's got no consent. Once I'm happy, I'm going to click next, and this is basically the end point. This is where I'm confirming that mailing, uh, so I can get one last look at it before it sends. Tells me what's been completed, and I can either now two options. I can either send now or I can schedule it for a later date and time so if it's for example you want to send it on a Saturday it might be the case you want to put that in uh, Saturday at a certain time uh, as you might not be working at that point and yeah a super office will send it out for you tip two use pocket CRM to send SMS messages SMS messages have an average open rate of 98% you can send the SMS messages, including URL links, to all the contacts you have registered on a project, a sale, or an activity. You can download Pocket CRM on the Apple App Store and on Google Play. Just search for SuperOffice. Now we can see how to bring all that information together internally by collaborating effectively with your colleagues. Tip 1. Register all your activities in your diary. Cole will show you how to do this. Thanks, Matt. And uh, just to explain, we are currently in the diary module now. A few things to highlight. You do have the ability to view uh, your own diary by day view, week and month. You also have the uh, ability to view your entire team's diary and availability. Now, this becomes very useful in this moment of time because if you do need to schedule appointments with your colleagues, uh, it's very important that everyone's diary is up to date. And I will be showing you that in a moment as well. But just to very quickly show you, um, I can see my team's um, availability. I can also departmentalize this as well. So you can uh, assign 
shall we say, a sales team's uh, diary view, technical marketing and services as an example. Um, but I can also change the diary. So I'm on mine at the moment. I could actually move this to Chris as an example. And now I'm seeing his diary day, week and month view. I can also see Chris's upcoming activities, anything overdue and his sales secretary, so his upcoming sales. So it's very useful to note that you can do this at this point. If I was to go back to my own diary, it's also important uh, to remember how communication, how important communication is at the moment. Uh, so let's ensure we're updating our own availability so my colleagues know when I am free and what I'm doing. So as you can see here, I've got um, my full week of avail availability here and um, I have ensured that I have updated this. So any annual leave I've been taking, I've been updating these appointments and ensuring that this is up to date for my colleagues to know. In this instance, I'm also looking at my activities. Uh, so these are my, this is my to-do list, ensuring that my upcoming activities are updated. Now, it might be the case that I know I need to make this call of Cherry Shop Sales. Uh, so it might be the case I've got some availability this afternoon. So actually, I can drag and drop this in and make this an appointment. So I know this is extremely important. I need to call at that specific time. So as you can see, it's now dragged into uh, that particular date and time. I've also got an overdue activity here, which I can go and investigate if I wish. If I was to click on this uh, and I wanted to have a look why that's overdue, I can now click the company icon and it'll actually take me to Harry Samuels. And I can now have a look into this. It might be the case I want to update it. I might want to click into it. Uh, you know, this is a phone call conversation, discuss, discuss an upcoming project. Uh, maybe I've, I've completed that call now and I can put this as all is good as an, as an example. And that is the note I'm leaving against that particular task and appointment. And I can actually tick that off as completed. If I was to go back to the diary, uh, the kind of last thing I want to show you on the diary is uh, the, the sales secretary as well. And this is a fantastic area to ensure this is your, sell, your own sales pipeline is updated too. Uh, keep an eye on this, make sure it's updated because if you were not at work, you'd want your colleagues to be able to access this via the diary view uh, and to be able to actively update. But as you can see, I've got an overdue sell here. I can very easily click into this to then investigate uh, why that's um, uh, overdue or the sell date has passed. Whilst we're on the subject of productivity, please remember to also take a look at our app store. Uh, we, we do have a free integrations to Office 365 and Google, along with many other apps to boost productivity. And these in integrations allow you to access and work on the same documents at the same time. So no matter that physical distance, you can see the same data and share thoughts, ideas and information in the same virtual space in real time. As Carl says, tip two, use Microsoft 365 and Google G Suite integrations where possible. They are free apps that help interlink the online version of Microsoft 365 and G Suite with your web tools, allowing for efficient document management. Tip three, use dashboards during meetings. Let Carl show you how we can do that in SuperOffice. Yes, thanks, Matt. Uh, absolutely. Dashboards are a fantastic way to uh, give you some visualized data uh, for a meeting uh, in these purposes. As an example here, I am on my dashboards at the moment. I've got a very uh, generic home page uh, with uh, we have uh, 48 uh, dashboards you can choose from that are out of the box. Uh, also, the ability to create custom dashboards via selections. Uh, so any selection you create, you have also the ability to create custom dashboards, which is very good if you want to build your own dashboards for a meeting. And as an example, I'm going to create a new tab, uh, and I'm going to call this I'm going to call this as an example uh, team uh, team relevant dashboard, shall we say? Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to have a two tile on this. And for this, I can I've already created a dashboard I've put into the system uh, called Open Cells. Uh, so this is showing me the whole team's Open Cells. Really useful to bring into a meeting. I I can even extend this out uh, and actually physically see those results. I can download this or print it off at this point, but I can also manipulate the data. So from this point, as an example here, I can see the cell stage is proposal is the highest of everything with the amount. I can click into that and actually see the physical data uh, and from here go into that information too. So from a managerial perspective, 
absolutely useful as well as a user's perspective to see that information. I could also, if I wanted to, have an activity-based uh, custom dashboard which I've created here, which is the overall team's activity. Another useful one to bring into a meeting. It could be the case that I want to use this to reference, you know, how are how are activity rates at the moment compared to the previous week. And as you can see, you will have the results listed here as a percentage up or down from the previous week. Also seeing that very important overdue activities same again live data if i wanted to i could click into that and uh, see the relevant uh, particular activity that is overdue and uh, action it in the meeting so very useful area to go the dashboards to to get that visual data and then to be able to bring that into a meeting anything you have field based within super office you could build a selection from and then create a dashboard to use in that meeting environment so you're now collaborating well internally, but what happens if your colleagues are ill or in the current situation furloughed and you need to cover their work? In our final section, we cover three quick tips to help you. Quick tip one, take over your colleagues to do list. I would like to show you how easy it is to see your colleagues diary and actually take over their to do list to ensure tasks are completed while your colleague is not currently working. Your CRM solution contains both your colleague's diary and their to-do list. By changing the view from your own diary to that of a colleague, as an example up here, I can click the drop down and change it from myself to Chris. I can now changing it to Chris can see all of his upcoming activities for the days and weeks ahead. As well as this, I am able to also see his appointments by day, week or month. I can also see Chris's sales secretary from here as well to help with following sales. But for the purposes of today, just as an example, I can see there are quite a few overdue tasks in this to-do list. If I was to click on, as an example, Zebra Construction, I can now click the company card icon and it will take me to Zebra Construction. I can now see the activity I just clicked on and from here, I can ascertain if it's something I can help with. I might then be able to follow up on his behalf or schedule for a later date upon Chris's return. Once I have updated this and gone back to the diary, I can now refresh this and know that that's no longer an overdue activity. Just to let you know as well, because I can actually see other colleagues' activities, I can confidently ensure their to-do list is looked after and updated while they're off work and will be up to date upon their return. Tip two, follow up on all open sales opportunities. Carl. I would like to now show you how easy it is to view all your open sales. This could then be also be amended to be more specific, dependent on what you are looking for. In this example, you should have this current selection included in your super office. And this is what we call a standard selection. If I was to click on selections here and start by typing sales, there will be a few options for sales. One of them in particular today is sales opportunities pipeline. Now, as you can see now, I've opened this up. It's given me all the results of the current open sales for the business. In these circumstances, it's a fantastic way to see the whole pipeline. And if needed, I am now also be able to see specific people's pipeline or colleagues of mine. To do this, as this is currently showing all open cells, I can now click add here and add an additional criteria. For today, I am adding the user ID being my colleague Carl. I will move Carl to the selected value and I will now refresh my results. Now I am seeing Carl's full pipeline. What's good about this now is as Carl's away, I can I can actually follow this up for him on his behalf. I can also from here, a good thing to note is I have the ability to go to task. It might be the case I want to do a bulk update. It might be the case I want to bulk update the closing date as an example. Uh, or if I wanted to as well, I am able to create a mailing from this particular list. It might be the case that I want to just touch base with all of these customers of Carl's uh, just to make them aware of the situation or any follow-ups that need completing. Tip three, take control of all active projects. 
I will now like to show you another useful standard of selection you could use to find all active projects in the business. If I go to selections here and I start by typing in project, you'll notice there is an option for projects, all active projects. Now I've gone into this selection, you will now clearly see all the current active projects with the status in progress, meaning these are all currently active and we need to ensure that all of Carl's projects are in hand while he's not at work. I will now add the criteria that I only want to see Carl's current projects in the list. Now this works very similar to the sales one I showed before. Uh, you click add on the criteria here, but this time I'm choosing project and I'm finding the user ID. And this will again be, is one of Carl being the selected value. Now I've added this to the search criteria and I click refresh. It's now showing me all of Carl's current projects in progress. As you can now see, it has been amended now so you can see all of Carl's current active projects. I can now actively follow up on these if needed. And just like the sales based selection, I can also complete actions via the task tab such as bulk update, or again, if the companies, if I wanted to send a mailing out to project members in the current project. Finally, I have a tip to help you focus on what matters the most. Use filters. You can use filter functionality to filter the activities tab by such criteria as owner, a group, an individual, associate, date and activity type. Just select the required period and the owner of an activity or a document and narrow down your search by removing all unnecessary information from your view. We hope that you have found these useful and that these tips help you in these times of crisis. Thank you for watching and do look out for more of our crisis webinars shortly or contact your account manager for further information on 0800 193 2820. Thank you.